Assalamu alaikum, uh, peace be with you, uh, brothers and sisters. It's been a while since I've been thinking actually about talking to, again about the topic of extremism. I wrote a book uh, on extremism a long time ago. I actually did a um, long time my memoir for my Islamic studies a long time ago on um, the concept of mitigation and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, f uh, stressed uh, on mitigation and avoiding going on extremes and how actually in jurisprudence in fiqh in practical uh, you know uh, ways how Islam always takes the easy way uh, taysir the concept of taysir but also stresses to all of us especially the youth we all go through that stage of zeal and, and we want to do everything we want to follow the sunnah we want to follow this and it's good but the intention is good however we should remember that what could, God forbid, take us to extremism. And extremism is the reality. And extremism takes different shapes. Sometimes people are extreme in religion, extreme in, 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 in games, in sports. So we need to balance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to that balance as He says, <laughs> And the sky and the firmament he has raised high and he put an equilibrium. He said a balance here. Mizan is a balance, but an equilibrium. So he said, do not go to the extremes. So make sure you give due balance and do not mess with this equilibrium, not only in the environment, in our lives. So I would like to talk about six points to avoid going to the extreme. Number one, and this is very important, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam long time ago uh, explained many verses of the Quran. One of them is Allah saying, وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Do not go to extremes, do not go in excess, do not go to uh, beyond the boundaries. Allah does not like those who, uh, for instance, squander when it comes to money, squander the resources, always waste. But uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, in, in the practice of the religion, he said, Be careful, do not exaggerate, do not go to the extremes in religion, meaning in practice in the religion. Nobody can practice all the religion. We do as much as we can, but nobody can be perfect. We can be excellent. However, inshallah, especially our youth, let's not go to the extreme. Always be careful from falling into unnecessary details. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, لَا تَسْأَلُوا عَنْ أَشْيَاءَ إِنْ لَكُمْ تَسُؤْكُمْ Do not ask about things that you have no need to ask about and, and, and it's just going to cause you, you know, uh, more difficulties. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us that Allah وَسَكَتَ عَنْ أَشْيَاءَ رَحْمَةً لَكُمْ غَيْرَ نِسْيَانْ فَلَا تَبْحَثُوا عَنْهَا Allah kept quiet, silent on many issues out of his mercy, not out of forgetfulness. So do not ask about them. Why go into details that we don't need? So one of the would lead a person to extremism, especially for our youth, is asking or focusing on unnecessary details. Number two, ignorance of core principles. A lot of our youth or in general, Muslims in general, we focus on details, but we forget the values and the principles. Take for example justice. Justice should be given priority. How could we talk about religious practice and we're unjust to one another? Justice, one of the names of God is Al-Hakam Al-Adl. That He is the judge and He is the just. And the most just uh, is Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. And Allah says, I have forbidden injustice on myself and I have made it forbidden amongst you. So do not oppress one another, do not act unjustly to one another. So we need to teach ourselves the core values of Islam which are universal, found in every culture, every religion, that they are recognized as very important. We need to learn that the main thing in Islam is about justice, mercy, peace, 
um, equality. Um, we should not tolerate racism. Uh, we're against, you know, uh, subjugation and abuse of others. All of these values have to be actually the face of what Islam is all about. Rather than focusing on details, as we said, number one, we need to focus also on these core principles. Number three, very important number three is, unfortunately, many, many forget courtesy and mannerism. And we go into extremes. One of the signs of extremism is ill mannerism, bad behavior, lack of courtesy. I've seen people who say they practice religion, but we comes to behavior when it comes to respect of uh, others, when it comes to attitude and the way, the body language itself, it shows uh, lack of adab, lack of mannerism. And it's important to focus on the point of courtesy. Akhlaq, especially that Islam says that uh, Rasulullah was sent to show humanity the best mannerism. And that's why he says, الأخلاق, I was sent to show humanity behavior. If we Muslims don't behave in the best way we can, then how dare we can claim that we are following Prophet Muhammad who was told by Allah, you know, to display the best mannerism possible. And that was the focus of his mission. The fourth point, number four, follows number three. The result of good mannerism and kindness is good language, the way we speak. The way we speak, it is part of mannerism, but the language and the rhetoric that we repeat all the time, the way we repeat, because sometimes you read of you know, uh, many uh, articles or, or even people talking to one another, there is too much hate in our language, too much disappointment, too much negativity. We need, and that's one of the signs of going to the extremes. In order to be in that balance, we need to focus on the message of kindness. If we actually um, try to read the literature that reports the life of the Prophet وسلم, we'll see a lot of love messages, kind messages, always tender love and care, always whatever can create that rapprochement, that closeness. And this is of course the mission of every Prophet Messenger, to bring people closer to one another and people closer to Allah. These two are very important. And that's why language, as Hegel says, is the house of being. It manifests, it reflects what's in the heart. So the tongue has to always uttered something good. And that's when Islam says, Prophet says, Man kana akhir, fal Whoever believes in Allah and life after that, he should say something good or be quiet. Quiet is better than saying or spewing something hateful that could cause, you know, uh, pain in someone's heart. Number five, rejection of creativity. And this is unfortunately a, a, a common theme when we talk about extremism. There is this tendency to reject. If you want to be pious and good, and you want to be a good Muslim, then you have to reject anything that is new, which is wrong. And in the name of avoiding innovation, bid'ah, ah, we reject everything. Bid'ah ah has to do with religious matters. Purely think that the Prophet said, this is how you pray, for instance, dhuhr, four rakahs. So we cannot say, oh, dhuhr is five or three, because that would be considered bid'ah. Ah. But innovating in the means of doing things, today we use microphones, today we use technology, we use cameras to deliver the message of religion. All of these are bid'ahs, ah, but they are actually good means to enhance and improve. So creativity should not be rejected in the name of innovation. We have to educate ourselves on innovation. Innovation is about religious matters that were finalized by the Prophet, peace be upon him, and we come and change them. But we can always be creative in the means and how we do things. Because of our time, we have means that were not available to those before. Just take uh, the example of microphone. The Prophet, when he spoke, there was no microphone. So one of the companions, Thabit ibn Qais, or Ali ibn Abi Talib, karamallahu wajah, may Allah honor his face. They had a strong voice, so they would repeat what the Prophet said, so others far away could hear. So today, we don't need to do that. We have microphones, we have speaker systems. So this is innovation, it enhances. So any innovation that would enhance and make actually the actual 
uh, worship or service or anything uh, easier, it would be, uh, inshallah, ex uh, accepted, such as making movies to, to explain Islam, uh, cartoons, anything that would enhance, nothing wrong with that, especially with the children, to be creative, this is their time. Last but not least, number six, and unfortunately, this is very important, and even Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did warn us about that, resources. We have a, a saying today, if you have money and time, you're the happiest person. But in reality, nobody has money and time. People have money, but they don't have time, or they have time, but they don't have money. So the smart person who has some of this and some of this can live happily. So we need to balance between money or resources in general and time. We have youth and we have time. So when I have time and I have resources, if I bring this, make a good combination, I can produce good work. So we should not waste our youth in useless things. Things that will not benefit us uh, health-wise, education-wise, intellectually, and all levels, we should actually use the resources available to us and the energy we have, and we can actually, uh, you know, uh, make great things. Use the energy and seek the wisdom of the elders and look at resources available as a youth. So the people who fall in extremism when they go into the extreme, and we don't mean by extreme in extreme also or religion, but extremism also in other things in life. So we have to balance between sports, which is good for our body, good for our intellect, and also balance with uh, entertainment, which is healthy, not the entertainment which is damaging. Also knowledge, seeking knowledge, ilm, and also the acts of worship that we have to do. And by creating that balance, we can avoid the extremes and we can actually fulfill that equilibrium Allah wants us to fulfill on earth. Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I just came actually yesterday from a long trip to Far East Asia, especially to Korea. I was blessed uh, to have this chance to see this beautiful country and beautiful people.